Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue and Moto 10.2 V1, if you can keep track of that naming scheme, has just been released. And there is an update to a really useful shading node in there called the Texture Switch node. And Texture Switch was added a couple of versions back, but it lacked some functionality and it had a couple bugs in it. And I, my one contribution to Moto 10.2 V1 is that I bitched about this enough uh, to the developers that Greg Duquesne, one of the main developers over there, and Pete Seagal uh, added some features and did some bug fixing, and it's a super useful node now. And Greg said, other Greg, if you if I fix this and add this little feature, will you make a video? So other Greg, here's your video. So this is a video about the texture switch node. So you may be asking yourself, why does Greg have the variation texture selected? Uh, variation texture has been there a long time, but it's also benefits from one of the features that Greg added uh, for the texture switch node. Now, so I'm going to show that first and then we'll jump on to the texture switch node. So the variation texture, as you know, is great for doing sort of random colorization or, or random assignment of values, right? And here I have the value set to diffuse color. And I have the variation source set to item. So what that basically means is each of these mesh items here, well, we got two mesh items and two instances. Each of these items has a specific item ID. And that item ID follows along this gradient here. And wherever the item ID falls, that's where they get the color. So this lady right here in the nice blue dress, she probably has an item ID of around oh, 0.3, right? So 0.3 is the same as 30%. Um, all the item IDs are between 0 and 1, and so it's easy that they squeeze in here. It's really convenient that you can just assign, you know, these colors via item ID. Problem is, you have no idea what the item ID is for any of these items. It's not exposed to the user, right? User being me. So if I want her, so this Rosie right here is the first item I added to the scene. You might think, okay, that was the first item added to the scene. That probably has an item ID of 0. Well, no, she's sort of this bluish color in here. She probably has, probably has an item ID of around 0.4. So I don't have any control of that. And what if I want, say, Rosie number four over here in the nice uh, fuchsia dress, right around 0.8 probably, to have a green color. I want to specifically make her green, right? So I'm using a variation texture. I just have one dress mask over here. I'm going to apply different colors to everybody, but I want to do it specifically, not randomly. And I can do that with a new feature that Greg added called, let me just actually deselect variation source and have the, uh, just to make this a little bit cleaner here, um, each, each of, every item in Moto now has a particle ID. So it's not a particle, that's an instance, this is a mesh, but they both have particle IDs. And particle IDs are gonna be super useful. I wonder why it selects those gradients every time I select them, it seems rather odd. Must be a bug. Okay, so um, particle ID lets me give each of these meshes a specific ID and I can use that to texture them. So if I go over to my shading and grab the variation texture and switch it from item to particle. In fact, particle may have existed previously in, in previous versions of Moto. I'll have to go back and check. It That probably just used the particle source. It probably still does actually if you're dealing with um, replicators, the the particle source, uh, particle ID for the particle source. But if you're dealing with meshes, it's gonna grab the particle ID from the mesh. And so what happened there? Everybody just went to zero, right? And why would it do that? Why are you grabbing my twist gradients? That's so annoying. Um, so everything went to zero, right? Everything got green because they all have a default particle ID of zero. So if I want this Rosie to have a nice red color, I can grab Rosie number four, and I can go over to channels and I can give her over here in the particle ID right there. I'm gonna give her say 0.9. And now she's red, right? Because if I go back to my variation texture, um, right here, right here, right here. There's some serious channel messing up being going on with 10.2 V1. Um, anyway, so we're right here, and so now I can assign, using the particle ID, I can assign specific colors to specific meshes with the variation texture. This is huge, because um, previously you couldn't do that. It was just always random. And now we can just have one sort of texture source, one, you know, one mask for all dresses, and give them whatever color we want. So that's great. That's variation texture. So. What if we want to use image maps? That's where texture switch comes in. So let's move on to texture switch. And first thing I do is let's turn Rosie back to 
zero particle ID just to reset the scene here a little bit. Boom. And let's go over to my shading. I'm going to turn off variation texture. And let's go add a constant. And so why are we adding a constant? Because a constant is a vessel. It is a container. It is an input for whatever we're going to hook up in the schematic. So that's just sitting there saying, hook something up to me. Got to say, I like the basic black, though. Nice cocktail dress. Anyway, it's just sitting there saying, hook something up to me. And then I will assign it to all these people over here on Diffuse Color Channel. So over here in Schematic, I'm going to drag in my vessel, my constant. And I'm going to zoom in because you probably can't read that. And in fact, I'm going to, I'm just going to push this lady up there a little bit. Okay. So here's my constant. So we need to hook some stuff up to it. Okay. So let's add a texture switch. Texture switch. Great. There it is. Hit return. Boom. Texture switch. And now we need to add some images. So add image. And here actually have octane installed so these are octane nodes but i'm just going to grab the shader node image map and drag that in here and you'll notice that it also comes with a texture locator which is nice i don't have to go in and add that separately it comes with it in automatically so now we've got an image and a locator and a texture switch node and our constant vessel over here right so first thing i'm going to do is switch this to uv mapping so this is one of the updates to uh, the texture switch node previously it did not work with uv mapping and that was a huge limitation, right? So you can use textures instead of just variation color, but they had to be projection mapped. Um, not super useful, especially if you're doing something like a dress here, right? So I'm gonna switch that to UV and make sure to pick your UV map, which in this case, I just have a standard texture map. And then I'm gonna duplicate this guy, right? And so there's, a, I think this is another bug just for now. I cannot just hit uh, Control D to duplicate. This is not doing it. Oh, by the way, before I do that, down here in the nodes twirl down, that's where this guy exists, right? This image map is, is going to appear in the nodes twirl down um, in case you're looking for in the shader tree. It is actually grabbable in the shader tree. It's just going to appear in the nodes where it's not hooked up to anything. Um, so what I can do is, let me just show you this. Well, I think it's a bug real quick. If I do like a add, like basic math add, and I get my little plus sign here, and I hit uh, control D, I can duplicate it. I have no idea why I can't control D duplicate this guy, but I can do it over here. So I'm gonna control D duplicate this over here a couple times, say four, because we've got four rosies. And then I will use my auto organize button. Oh wait, I don't have an auto organize button. I gotta do this, so. Yeah, when's that coming? That's the next thing I'm gonna bitch about. Maybe we'll get that next. Okay, this is me losing money because I'm moving things around. This is also why I like the shader tree better than notes. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Of course, I guess in other programs, you don't have to do that if they have auto add. All right, so each of these um, guys, let's add a, uh, an image map, right? And so I went ahead and added some image maps while you weren't looking. And so I've got a few patterns here. So let's just grab uh, kind of like that abstract pattern there. And this guy, I know this is cut off over here, but you don't need to see it. We'll add another one, and then I kind of like the leafy pattern, nice fall collection. And then last but not least, let's do a, what do you think, puzzle pattern or floral pattern? Puzzle pattern, floral pattern. I'm hearing, I'm hearing floral. Okay. All right, so there's the images, and you can see the little yellow dot there is now showing that we've got that image um, attached. You don't have to expand all those if you don't want to. I'm not going to. And so here comes the fun part. Let's hook this up. So first thing I'm going to do is do the texture color out do, 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 to the color in, right? Um, this is sort of annoying. And, and because I know a lot of people are like, well, wait, do I go to color or texture color? So the way I tend to think of it is texture color is the calculated color and that you're going to send out to the output. So this node is going to calculate some things. It's going to have some inputs or some sort of value or color on it. That will be calculated and you could spit that out with a texture color right so um, but this is an input here so we're going to do this calculated color out of this into the input of the constant okay still black because i haven't hooked up any images yet and now is the um important part because how i hook up all of these images what order i hook them up is going to determine uh how they fall on uh, the the rosies up here let me explain that better in a second because that was a horrible explanation <laughs> so what we can do is you hit you hook up the purple node here right and so what is the purple here here's something that um 
you get a lot from Moto users is if I go if I go value here to let's say input value, you'll notice this single uh, color here, and this is just a channel hooking up to a channel, right? That's a, a a channel. In fact, if I go up here, if you hover over that, not that, if you hover over this, you'll see that says. If you hover over the purple, it's hard to hover with a Wacom tablet, uh, show item relationships. And then if you hover over this one, it says show channel connection. So let me hook up this purple one right here. And if I hide this, you'll see the purple is gone. And if I bring it back on, the purple's there. And if I go like this, I, I lose the channel relationships. So these are channels. These are item relationships. And what that is, is, is it's just a different kind of connection. This purple connection, Think of it as a bundled up cable where there's a lot of information going between this node to this node. Not just a single value here, or in the case of a color, three different values. There can be all kinds of information heading in here, right? So that's what the purple is. That's what the relationship is in case you're wondering. And by the way, I think these purple nodes, this just sends information here to here. I believe this is a bi-directional communication node or link, right? These guys are now talking to each other. That's the way I think of it. Purple nodes, relationship nodes, or I'm sorry, purple noodles, relationship noodles, they're talking to each other. Uh, these value ones, these channel um, connections, they're just sending information from here to here. They're just sending a value from here to here, or in this case, three values from here to here. Okay, there's that. Um, you'll notice this little arrow here. That's because these can be coming in in order. So you'll notice when I drag this in, let me just sort of deselect that, that I can do above, between, or on top, or below, between, or on top, right? So I'm just going to keep it below because this is below that and it's just easier on the eyes. Um, and you may not have noticed that when that arrow is twirled up. So if you see an arrow here, you can twirl it down, you can see what order these are in. That order matters. So now you're looking at uh, the nice uh, pattern here, that nice uh, floral pattern, nice spring pattern on our rosy models there. And why is she getting that? Well, let's, uh, I'm just gonna click that. This is our flower pattern, right? And I think I can maybe make this bigger now. And that's in the bottom slot. And remember, we're using texture switch. We're going to be using the uh, particle ID value. So again, our rosies all have a initial particle ID value of zero, right? And so this guy down here at the bottom, the flowers at the very bottom of this list of four gets zero. So here's the only part where it's a little bit confusing. You have to kind of think about this. So these are all inputs into the textures, right? And they're going to have a value. All of these inputs are going to have a value between zero and one. So the first one is zero and the top one's one. So there's four of them. So it's pretty easy to think of how this works, right? This is zero to 0.25. This one's, well, 0.249999. This next one is 0.25 to 0.499999. Infinity. <laughs> this is 0.5 to 0.749999. And this one, this last, whoops, this top one, which I just connected, is 0.75 to 1. Again, each of these inputs into the texture switch nodes, when there's multiple ones, has a number. This is the first one, that's zero. It goes along a gradient, right? Just like our texture switch did. Go over here to our texture, uh, variation texture, not texture switch. If I can look at my variation texture, the first one is 0 to 0.25. Let's just make it 0.25. And the second one is 25 to 50. And then 50, is, 50, let's add another one in here. 50 to 75. And then 75 to 100, right? So these inputs in, in the schematic work the same way. I know I'm belaboring the point here, but we all get this, right? This first one right here, this first image is the equivalent of this whole section right here. The second image is this section. The third image is this section. The fourth image is this section. And like everything in Moto, everything's calculated. The shader tree, everything bottom up. Deformer list or mesh op list, bottom up. So 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.51, right? All right, now we got that. So as you may surmise, Rosie with a particle ID of zero is going to get the one on the bottom. And a Rosie number two, let's say I want her to have um, the nice leaf pattern. I'm going to give her a particle ID of not the variation texture. Let me drop that, get out of my channel list. 
Uh, Rosie 2, let's give her a particle ID of 0.25. Boom, boom, boom. And you're going to see this update. Nice leafy pattern, right? So why did this Rosie get it? Well, this Rosie is an instance of this Rosie. So instances will pick up all the channels of their parent, of their master. And, um, but they can all be overridden. So I can, you can see this little purple here. I can override that. So I can say this Rosie, Rosie number three, let's give her 0.5. And now you see that color change there. That means it's been overridden. In fact, if I hover there, you'll see um, a color saying constant. The channel is a constant value. Previously, it had a purple, which is the source value. Whoops. Whoops. Come here. Come on. Um, the source value, which is the source being the uh, the parent of the instance. So we've changed that. We've overridden that. We've given her this uh, my now favorite pattern, um, the swirlies. And Rosie number four, we can give her 0.75. We don't have to give her exactly 0.75. Remember, it just like the variation texture here, it's she has a part. I can put, give her a particle ID of anywhere between 0.75 and one, because this guy in the fourth slot here is occupying. Right, this guy right here is occupying between 0.75 five and one so let's give it you know let's give rosie number four like a particle id of oh i don't know point eight five all right and she got the classy abstract pattern all right very good um and since these are uv mapped i can go back in here to my classy abstract pattern and say you know let's just uh up the wraps all right i like that and so this is great texture switch is working with uvs and it's working with the new particle id value right here we have the particle id value and what's really cool is you can rig the particle id value it's just another channel so we can rig it should i rig it maybe i'll rig it in fact before i rig it let me show you something else um i'm gonna give rosie number three here Remember, 0 to 0 0.25, 0 0.25 to 5, 0 0.5 to 0.75. I'm going to give her a particle ID um, instead of 0.5. I'm going to give it a 0.35. And so it's going to attach this one, right? But I can actually go over to my texture switch node and click the interpolate button right here. And you see what it's doing because she's 0.35. It's giving her... A blend of 0 to 0.5 and if I can you see that blend is that blendable so with the interpolate button click it's going to blend it and if I again I'm going to use this uh, variation texture um, as a as a sample so what it's essentially doing is just giving that blend right in here right so this is this is green this is blue in fact it's actually 0.35 so it's blue and purple she's getting that blend right in here Right, the blend between uh, these uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, the third and fourth nodes. That's what she's getting that blend between. And it's similar right now. If you don't have interpolate active, it's kind of it's kind of like having these guys set to um, stepped, right? See, how that's that's how that's normally working in the texture switch node. If I go to the texture switch node, if I don't have interpolate clicked, it's it's working like that stepped gradient. Um, like this and they just get whatever's closest in that range right but if I click interpolate then it's going to uh, it's going to blend like that unless you're right on the dot 0. 0.5 and uh, you know zero so I unclick interpolate it's gonna go back to that right or she's gonna go back right she's gonna go back I can't remember who's going back Rosie number two is going back What's Rosie number two let's put her back right on the money of what well, she's 0. 0.25 Rosie number three Hmm, 0.5. Okay, get her her uh, swirly dress back. Okay, so now we've got that. Should we try to rig? Let's try to rig. So when I talk about rigging the particle ID, what am I getting at? You know, what I'm trying to say is the particle ID can be assigned a value based on some scene parameter. So instead of setting it manually to get the uh, the image you want on the mesh you want, which is totally convenient and a great thing to do because we're texturing all these women with just one uh, mask here in the shader tree. 
but we may want to do something uh, more rules based. Let's say instead of women up here, we have rocks and rocks on a mountainside, let's say. And I want to give textures to those rocks depending on how high they are. So previously, we could only you know, could assign a color depending on how high they are or a value for something like a reflectivity of de depending on how high they are using the gradients and all the uh, sort of gradient inputs we get. For instance, let me just show a gradient here. If you're not super familiar with Moto, gradients have all kinds of inputs, right? So a gradient can have an input based on incidence angle and um, you know screen YUV, distances to locators, things like that. And your point of value, but you're not doing that to an image. So let me get rid of this gradient here. Um, so what we're doing with the texture switch node and particle ID is we're gonna apply a specific image to a specific um, item based on some scene parameter. So in the rocks example, rocks on a mountainside, rocks up top, get certain images that have, I don't know, snow mixed in. Well, rocks on the bottom are at a very low altitude based on the y, uh, uh, y altitude or y uh, position value are going to have some sort of, I don't know, sandy desert floor color. So that's exciting to me because I can assign images to big complex scenes based on a set of rules I create and feed the, the output of those rules, keeping that number on those rules between zero and one and feeding that into the particle ID on the meshes. So let's take a practical look at how that may work, okay? All right, so I've got Rosie number one here. And Rosie number one has a particle ID channel, which I'm gonna throw in here. And I'm actually gonna uh, maximize this viewport right now. And let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so here's some particle ID for Rosie. And then I'm going to right click and I'm gonna add a channel and I'm gonna add world position. Okay, there we go, world position. I'm gonna add another node called measure, measure, measure distance right there. And then I'm gonna add a new item to the scene. I just pressed F2, by the way, to bring up the model tab. If you don't have F2 committed to mes muscle memory, F2, F3, F4, right? Setup, sculpt, model. These should be in your muscle memory right now. I think they may have added one. What's F5? Uh, command history. That should totally bring up the uh, item list, add item. Anyway, um, so we got a measure distance. We got a Rosie, and I've got my model here. I'm going to add a cone, and I'm going to, uh, I guess I can, let me, let me go to 3D view. And here's my cone. Let me just make that cone smaller. And I'm going to move it over here, and I'm going to, press M and give it a red mask called red cone. And um, there's red cone, so our cone is not red. There it is, and it's also right there. So we're back over here at schematic. I'm going to drag my cone into here. And again, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to give it a, um, add the channel world position. You can also grab it from the channel list here. I believe, is world position added? Is world position on here by default? It may not be. Uh, yes, it is not. So channels can be added dynamically and removed, as you may know. So I can add a user channel here. Well, that's a user channel. I want to add a, um, a channel that uh, exists within Moto but isn't been added to this item yet. And so world position, that's what I'm doing there. And so we've got Rosie with world position, and we've got particle ID. We've got a measure distance here. Um, so here's a little trick. I know it's sometimes confusing, confusing people, but if I'm trying to get world position into, say, position... Um, you know, from Rosie, you know, to the cone. I'm trying to get that angle in there or that uh, that distance measure. And and then I'm, it's a little weird that Rosie's over here, but I'm eventually gonna pipe in to particle ID. You see what I'm saying? Um, so what I wanna do is just a nice little trick Moto has is I can right click on this channel and say separate it. And I'm just moving this Rosie world position channel over here just for readability purposes because these are channel links, right? Remember our channel versus relationship. And so there, it is a flow from here to here. So that's just easier on my brain to have Rosie's particle ID over here and Rosie's world position over here. And then I need to output the distance. And, and the thing with particle ID, remember it's normalized between zero and one. So if the distance of, of that cone to Rosie is like five, that is, then it's just gonna give, um, it's just gonna return, you know, it's just gonna always give me, if it's greater than one, it's always gonna give me this top image here. So I want to keep it under one. So I got to say some like maximum distance that the cone is away from Rosie. It's always going to give this top image. So let's just say like four meters or something. So I'm going to add a divide node, divide. 
And I'm going to say whatever this distance is, I'm going to, whatever this distance is, I'm going to divide four, nope, other way around, whatever this distance is, we're going to divide it by a maximum of four. So if the distance is really big, like eight, it's going to give me a two. So anything over four, if it's four meters away, it's going to give me a one. Anything over four meters away from this from this distance is also going to give me a one. So anything over four meters is going to give me this top image here. And anything under that is going to give me, um, whoops, I just put a four there. It's going to give me whatever this value is. So right now, if I hook this into particle ID, well, in fact, why don't I unmaximize and let's see the magic happen here. So start this guy up. So the cone is really close to her, right? In fact, if I look at uh, this value here, I'm going to be outputting 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is going to be this very first texture here, right? Because this first one goes from 0 to 0.25. So if I hook this up, nothing much is going to change. So why don't I move? Well, actually, this is a good way to start. So I'm going to hook this up. Boom, and voila, nothing changes. You think, okay, great, but what if I move this cone farther away? So I go over to a 3D view here and I grab my cone, activate my move tool and move the cone farther away. And now she's getting this one because the output of my uh, measure distance is, well, it's, it's this output is 2.8 meters, but I'm dividing that by four, so I'm, getting 0.7 here which is you know from the uh 0.5 to 0.75 so that's getting the third one right here right it's getting this one and if i want to move the cone a little more i can of course uh, get this one right here so i just do that move my cones more in fact if i move it really far out it's always going to get that last one and there it goes a cool abstract pattern so that's rigging dresses right seems pretty cool yeah, okay. Um, but obviously rigging rocks or leaves or things like that is from any scene parameter, as long as you normalize it between zero and one, is super useful. And you get to do this with UV mapped images, not just colors or values. So this is a really big deal. There's two other modes for texture switch that I will, I'm just gonna show really quickly since we're here, right? So we've got particle ID value. That's what we've been showing the whole time. Let me swipe this here and pause that. And we're going to switch this to surface ID value. And over here, I am going to change this preview. Whoops, where am I? Right here. To shading effects, uh, surface parameter, surface ID, which is pretty neat. We can see what the surface ID value. So this is the surface ID value. And uh, the Moto renderer gives all masks, all P tags, I guess, essentially, um, they have over here in the shader tree, a surface ID. And you can use that um, to assign uh, the images with the texture switch node. And so if you look over here, let me unpause this, you'll see that we went leaves and uh, star pattern, and then leaves and star pattern. So the instances are picking up the same um, surface ID as the parent. And you see that this one is close to one, right? So it's really bright, really bright red. So that's going to be up close to one. It's going to be the top one. The other one's sort of in the middle. So it's the leaf one, which is just under 0.5. And so service ID is a nice way to randomly assign images uh, with the texture switch node. Uh, so that's great that it's there. But it's um, if you're trying to do something very specific, then you use uh, particle ID. The other one, let me just pause this guy and remove this guy is really can be really weird input value so input value is this uh here's the input value input right and so you can again rig input values if i do something let me do something kind of weird let me add a gradient and again you could put anything any sort of scene parameter into input value it just has to be between zero and one uh, so you could you have to normalize it between zero and one um the gradient let's uh say for the gradient input let's do back facing and not back facing. Let's do something weird like slope. Slope is weird. And then let me edit the gradient real quick. So we'll put one on um, 90% and uh, or 90 degrees is 100% and zero degrees is 0%. So zero degrees slope, which is, I guess, flat, right, would be uh, would be zero, would be this guy down at the bottom, where 90 degree would be the guy at the top. In fact, I'm going to unplug these two here. So we just have two images, zero and 90, zero and 90, right? So 
circles at zero, abstract at 90. And then I want to plug in my, <clears throat> this is a value, so let's do our computed value here, texture value, and plug that into the input value. It's getting kind of ugly. Dink, dink, dink. Okay, so texture value, input value. So now on texture value, we've got uh, zero is going to be the bottom one, like I just said, which is what? The flower, and the top one is the uh, abstract. So, all right, we'll see what we got. And okay, kind of hard to tell what's going on here, but if you look, if I push in, zero is the sort of flatness. You'll see that that flower is up here near the top. So if I sort of scooch this in, bring it into 30 degrees, I can creep the uh, flower pattern down the slope, right? Weird, huh? And then um, this is where you can use the interpolate mode to blend those together sort of nicely. So yeah, probably not the best example. I don't know if I'd do the floral pattern or the classy evening gown wear, but oh, there's some more slope right there on her, on her legs. But yeah, so that's just another way. Slope is just an example. You could use any parameter from the shading or the scene or whatever and put it into texture value or uh, input value. So one last thing, I duplicated the rosy models and we've got a whole platoon of uh, high fashion models here. But imagine you're, let's say, trying to um, texture an army, right? And you have different uniforms for different people. Um, texture switch is a great way to do this. You could do it all within one mask. So you'd have one mask for uniform, or dress in this case. And we're setting this to particle ID. And here I'm just using um, these little basic math add nodes. These guys right here, basic math add. And just by just doing, you know, zero plus whatever number, you get that constant basically a constant right so i can determine this 0 0.5 0 0.15 there's five of these guys in here right so 0 to 0 0.2 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 etc this 0 0.5 is going to get the bottom image and the next one here 0 0.35 is going to get a second image so i'm determining which of these images go to which of these models via uh, these little constant nodes here and you can right click and set a color on those if you want to sort of help you out but, you know, this would be really easy if you're trying to um, divide up uniforms on an army and via particle ID. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, so we're specifically determining which images go where. And then if you want to, I don't know, mix things up some more, you can still use variation texture. Here I've got it set to, uh, oh, we'll set it to item. And remember, this will just based on the sort of internal item ID we can't get to, so sort of randomized items, item IDs in there, we're going to apply um, these colors on top. So we have diffuse color, and because uh, this is the shader tree and it's awesome, we can say, I don't know, color dodge, and um, colorize our dresses based on, uh, whoops, why don't we just take this out of stepped mode, get a little more, colors in there and there we've uh, you know colorized our dresses based on um, just doing a color dodge mode on top of the uh, constant mode so so you can see there's just a ton of possibilities you can use the texture switch node in combination with the variation texture you can determine where you want images randomly you can determine where they want very specifically with the particle ID and they work with UV maps which is huge so go texture switch some things that's it Yum, yum!